Recording your in-ear monitor mix is a great way to reference what you're hearing as well as help you create a better mix in the future. And let's be honest, it's pretty cool to be able to post your in-ear mix on Instagram. <laughs> well, if you sound good, that is. Ooh. There are lots of ways for a band to run in-ear monitors. So in this video, I'm covering the most popular options and will show you how to record each of them. When doing something new like this, I always suggest you start by taking a close look at the gear and test the setup before the first time you want to successfully record the mix. I know this video and others are going to help you, so could you do me a favor? If you like this content and this video, please hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for notifications. Also, follow us on Instagram. We share daily content that further explains and builds on the topics of our weekend videos. Hi, I'm Nathan from Ohio, and welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs on YouTube. I have over six years experience in videography, editing, streaming, church tech, live sound, and lighting. I have also done some really cool things like 3D printing, Arduino, and networking. I have worked both as a paid staff member and as a volunteer for churches, conferences, and events. When you start looking at a sound system for the purpose of recording audio, you're most likely going to find these four types of connections. XLR, typically a microphone cable, quarter inch is typically seen on guitars, and eighth inch, which is the connector used for wired headphones and in-ear monitors. A Y cable is a cable that you plug into the source, then it gives you two outputs. One output goes to the original destination and the other goes to your camera or recording device. The Behringer P16 is a personal monitor mixer that sits behind band members so they can easily adjust their personal in-ear mix. P16s are a great product of Behringer and they work with their series of mixing consoles. If that's not the platform that you're using, then there's probably a system that works within your specific platform. I am currently here at the Vineyard Church in Wheeling, West Virginia. And in the current configuration, we're using a Dante network to connect the front of house console to the X32 on stage. The X32 is mixing our mostly wireless in-ear monitors, as well as feeding audio inputs and outputs from Dante to the stage. So our drummer is our only band member at the moment that uses wired in-ears and is using a P16 unit. So for this, I'm just going to take a quarter inch and I'm gonna go into the output, the line out on the back and plug it into it. Now I can run this XLR to wherever I'm recording or even like this iRig device it can go straight into here and then go into my phone or the drummer's phone and record. Wireless in-ear monitors are great, but that means that to get a copy of this signal, we have to go to the source and use a Y splitter on the XLR going to the transmitter. This is an XLR Y cable and these things are amazing. Definitely in my top 10 purchases list. I should really make a video on that. Hmm. These are extremely useful and I have never had a sound issue that was traced back to this device. That means if there is an issue with something sound system related after you plug one of these into the system, it's probably not your fault. Hopefully your sound engineer doesn't look at you because, well, you are the one who plugs something into the system. As a musician, you should always build and maintain a good relationship with your sound techs. They have just as much, if not more, influence than you as to how the service flows and sounds. So here are the wireless transmitters for our wireless in your monitors. And on the back of them is a XLR cable. We're gonna take this XLR cable and we're gonna put a Y cable in it. In this case, it's really hard to get to the back of the wireless racks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here where the cable is coming out of the X32. So in our case, we're using a console as the bus output. So I'm gonna take my mix bus and I'm gonna unplug it and I'm gonna plug it into a Y splitter. And then I've also got plugged into this Y splitter, the cable that's going to the stage where I'm recording it at. And then I'm gonna plug it back in through this Y cable. So the output will come out from the Y cable and then go to two places, the original destination and the recording. I wanna mention Avium in-ear monitor systems. These are just like the P16s, a personal monitor that I know a lot of churches use. With the P16 units, they connect to the mixer or stage box, which converts the signal from analog to digital. The Avion systems can work a couple of different ways. You either have a split snake where all the channels are split into two, just like the Y cable, and one is sent to the Avion analog to digital converter. That's the box all the personal mixers plug into and then get their data from over ethernet cables. A friend of mine's churches has an Avion system that works a little different. They use a digital Allen and Heath system and an expansion card feature that they have can send digital audio to the Avioms. 
Something we run into on their Avion mixers is that there's only quarter inch outputs and there's only one of them. So we have to use a different Y cable. This one needs a male quarter inch out to a female eighth inch for our ears. And then on the other side of the Y is a male XLR that is sent to the interface I'm recording with. Unless we solder a cable like this, we will just have to use a quarter inch Y cable and then a quarter inch to XLR cable. If you're using a setup like Jake from Churchfront in this video, he is converting eight of his bus sends from the digital stage box, female XLRs to male quarter inch. Then they're using the Behringer power play as a rack mounted headphone amp. If this is similar to your setup, then you should use a Y splitter cable straight out of the stage box, XLR going to your personal channel on the power play unit. Okay, so now that we have discussed options for getting the signal from our in-ear mix, then we're going to hit record. If you noticed, I left us hanging each time once we got a usable signal and connection to record with. For recorders, I would look at devices such as the Zoom H5n, which is great for recording audio from any quarter inch XLR or eighth inch source. This can be in-ear mixes, the main mix from a mixing console, or a simple shotgun mic for recording an interview. If you are mixing in-ears that output from the mix bus on an X32, then you can record the mix bus with the USB port on the face of the mixer. You can put the USB drive into the console in the face, click view, go to the config tab, arrow over one, and then on this page, you can select what you record. So we can record any mix bus instead of the main left and right, or we can just record the main left and right. If you don't wanna mess with using Y cables and reconfiguring things or other recording techniques, I have a final thought that is super simple. By going straight out of the wireless body pack or personal mixer where the eighth inch jack normally plugs into your in-ears, then you can add a Y cable there and record directly into the small recorder like this Sony Zoom recorder or a Zoom H1N. They are super reliable. They use one AAA battery and can record for lots of hours. Here, I'm literally gonna plug this splitter into my body pack and then I'm gonna plug in this aux cable. And then I'm gonna send this aux cable into this little recorder that I've got here. And the other side of this cable is literally just gonna plug in my inner monitors. Okay, so I'm playing keys tonight here for our Thursday night recording, which gets recorded for Sunday morning. So I'm gonna record my inner monitor mix tonight and here's how I'm gonna do it. So I have got the XLR splitter over in the, on the rack on the X32 console and that's splitting my in-ear feed to my wireless pack. And then I'm, I have an XLR cable coming through the floor I'm going to plug that XLR into the audio interface that I'm using to output main stage. The interface has one input XLR and can output at the same time. Main stage is going out and the in-ear monitor mix is coming in. On the laptop, I'm gonna record the audio through the QuickTime player by selecting the interface as the source. Tonight, I'm actually using the splitter because I'm also trying out this new thing. I'm sending it to this iRig converter, which is converting it to my phone. So that's kind of cool. You could actually live stream with this setup. If you have someone that insists that something is now messed up because you plugged something into their sound system, I can assure you that if you have it wired like I showed you, it will only affect your personal monitor mixer. And if you do have an issue, please send me a DM on Instagram and I can most likely help with that issue. Something else I want to mention is that some people have powered mixers with an amplifier built into the mixer, instead of having external amps, the output from the mixer can be going straight to unpowered speakers. If this is the case, under no circumstances, go out of the powered out into a recorder. You'll fry it. Most of the outputs on the mixer are fine, but just those two on the back, stay away from those. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching another video. It means a lot. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. I release a new video each Saturday at 9.38 a.m. So please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell for notifications. See you guys next time. Verse.